Hello, I am Annette. I am a British artist and urban sketcher living and working in the south of France. On Instagram, I am known as Annette Morris Art. Why do I love making art? Because it's a fantastic thing to do. I am very inspired by where I live and the landscape around me, nature, the life day-to-day -day life in the French villages and towns where I live. It's all about telling stories and kind of looking beyond. So I think um, as an urban sketcher, that's where I find my, my inspiration. Hey everyone. Um, let me go ahead and just check. Hmm. Um, and that do you have a YouTube pulled up? Maybe we could mute the tab because I'm hearing echo. <laughs> no worries. Meanwhile, if you could hear us though, um, let us know where you're from. Type llama in the chat. I guess the echo is gone. Amazing. All right. So just type llama in the chat. Let us know where you're viewing from today. Um, how is it there? Annette and I have been just um, talking about the weather where, I'm, where we're at. And I could see a lot of people already in the chat. So, okay, llama. I see some llama already. So I think we can be heard. Um, hello again, everybody. My name is Kathleen. I am with Etcher. I'll be your host for today. And we are an art learning platform who works with art teachers from all across the globe. And today's free demo is brought to you by an artist. Um, some of you might have already known because she had her classes before with Etcher and she's coming back for more. She's no other than Annette Morris. And this works as a preview for her 90 minute class, which will be on April 28th, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Now you might want to note that Eastern time has have um, daylight savings time rather has happened. So um, if you want to take note of this 90 minute class date, you might want to take note of that too. Um, and in that class, she'll be talking about how to create unique urban sketches with dynamic color choices. And um, so before we begin, if you have questions for Annette, just type uh, question, just type your question in the chat in all capital letters. And speaking of chat, keep an eye on the chat because I'll be dropping several links, including the reference photos um, and our private Facebook group, which is open to anyone making art related to both our free content and paid classes. So without further ado, um, Annette, can you let us know what you'll be doing today and how that connects to your Etcher class? Okay, hello, hello, everybody. Uh, today we are going to, well, I am going to be sketching this. I hope you'll be sketching along with me, um, but if you're not, then you'll have all of this to refer to later. So we're going to be looking at using colour and ways to use colour differently, rather than always sketching and using the colours that you see locally. So this is a really, really boring stone wall. It's usually in shadow. So I'm looking at ways to make this look a little bit more dynamic and interesting. So how this relates to my mini workshop is that a lot of these techniques and a few others besides will be what I focus on in this. And this is again, actually on the same bit of the, of the bridge of this canal scene, it's just a different view. So looking at some of those techniques and kind of expanding on them a bit. So this is the scene that I'm going to be doing in the mini workshop, which will be obviously a, a bit longer too. So we've got not much time today. So I hope that you uh, will get some little sketching tips and color tips from what we're going to do. I did prepare a little um, very basic drawing, which if you have got that to hand might help you speed up because that's actually what I'm going to be starting with today. In my last workshop, I did actually draw from scratch, but today I really want to focus on watercolor and on using, using the paint on our, on our sketch pages. My color palette is generally a fairly bright, surprise, surprise. If you've sketched with me before, then you'll know some of these colors that I use 
quite regularly. And of course, although my palette are these very bright colors, I can still make quite muted tones if I need to. So for example, just using my sap green and sienna together with a touch of blue will get me this darker green. If I use my, my purple, my violet and sienna, then I get this very muted shadowy color. And here, just by combining these three together, I almost get black. So I don't need to have these muted colors in my palette. I generally work with the brighter ones. Now, this isn't a color mixing class. So what I'm going to be doing is really just looking at the basics of using color with our primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. And obviously we've got these really nice warm tones on this side and then the cooler ones here. So how do we decide how to use those in a sketch if we're gonna do something a bit different? So where are we gonna place them? How are we going to adapt our very dull scene here? Um. Before we begin, Annette, sorry to interrupt you, but could we um, speak a little louder? It appears the volume might be a little too um, soft for others. Uh, apparently we are on max, just to let every, everybody know. Um, but yeah, I think that would help, so. Um, okay. I'm just mind. changing, is that better? Um, sound is fine for others, but I think for others it's a little bit um, soft. Um, on our end, I think it is on max. So um, let's just speak a little louder, I guess. I'll speak a little louder too, if that helps. Okay, okay. well, I have just upped the settings for my microphone. Yeah. So hopefully that will help. Yeah, thank you so much. Sound is fine no. as always. Well. Thank you so okay. much. Good, good, good. Okay, so looking at how to use color and ways to just adapt our sketches a little bit, make them a bit more individual, make them a bit brighter. So what I thought I'd do was just look very quickly while I was waiting for this to start. I was just looking at how different color choices influence your sketches. So here are four mini versions of this. And I'll show you this really, really quickly. But basically you can work with the local color. No problem, there's no reason why you wouldn't want to do that. But in a scene like this, the local colors are not terribly exciting. And the other thing here with these, this local color is that it's all very, it's a very similar palette of ochres and grays and greens. And then you've got this guy in the red jacket. So he on his own is kind of, it doesn't fit very well for me that because he's just, that, that little figure just sort of jumps out. But actually this is, this is, this is nice. Some of this stonework is lovely. Here I've got a bit more adventurous with my color. So I'm using lighter washes of yellows and oranges, nice brighter greens, but it's not deep enough. I don't have enough contrast in my sketch. It looks quite flat, even with this here in the archway. It's still, still not quite there. Again, I thought here we'd try and stay with a kind of more local palette. But what I've done here is I've looked more closely at my picture and I can see that this is a lot brighter on this side than it is over here. So I've got, I'm starting to see that there's a, a lighter, warmer shade coming in here than this cooler, more shadowy area here. So I've already got a bit of a, a balance. So that's how I've applied that there. I've, I've gone with the local colors, but just shifted it a little bit. And then I've noticed that if I put some red here, that balances up with the guy with the jacket. So these are just little things that you can do to make something that's quite drab a bit more interesting. And here, I've gone really crazy with the colors. So lots of deep washes of really bright colors, but it's all too much. There's no, there's no breathing space in this because I've got so excited with all my lovely colors that I haven't let any light come through. So there's very little contrast and the paper can't breathe. So when I'm looking at uh, what I'm sketching, I always want to think, well, it's, it's easy to lay down lots of washes, but be aware of the light and try and preserve the light in your sketch. Find out where those light spots are because it's loads easier to add watercolor than it is to take it away. So with my watercolors, I have got um, 
three brushes, which the sizes I've got is a bigger one, which is a 12, a finer one, which is a three, and then I have my, my fine rigger brush here. It's just the three I'll use today. I also have three watercolor pencils. Now the watercolor pencils, won't be using them very much, but sometimes I use colored inks and watercolor pencils can do kind of an equivalent job um, and they're really easy to get hold of. So rather than expecting you all to have colored inks today, I'm gonna to be using a few touches of, of those. So for my sketch, I will actually, having done my very basic sketch with my HB pencil, I'm now going to go in with a 6B, which has got a lot more uh, oomph to it, to just pick out some of the details that I want to highlight when I look at this. And they're going to be things like this, this bar that goes across here. So if I was using an ink pen, these would be the things that I would want to accentuate perhaps to just add a little bit of line weight with a thicker pen or something like that to really highlight those areas. And I've got this funny little feature here. What's nice about this is, can you see this? Where it kind of, it's got a paler, paler piece sticking out, which is just slightly lighter. So it's gonna break up all of that. So I'm gonna highlight that as well. That's quite interesting to me. I've got my, my rocks, they can be any old random shape. And the other thing that I really want to do is put in just a few marks to suggest these stonework features and you know some of these rocks in the wall. So I'll put in some lines for those very loosely, of course. And I'm not going to draw every brick and every stone, but it'll just give me something to work with because this is although it's a very kind of dense graphite pencil when you've got those washes on it won't be quite as harsh as if you were using oops ink so i've got these very random shapes around here I'm not going to draw them all and then i've got this very untidy Kind of concrete here so I'll just try and make that look more like stones to just make that look a bit more interesting there. So we've got some patterns forming in our so just those slightly thicker pencil marks will really really help. Now I'm not going to at this point do anything about the this greenery going on here with the pencil. I'm not going to do that. Might just accentuate that there, where the there's some brick patterns there. But that is all I really want to do at this stage with the with the pencil because the first thing I want to do is get straight in with the paint. And um, I do have a hairdryer next to me because. Uh, because of we, you know, obviously working through this quite quickly, don't want to have to wait around for it to dry. So I'll mute myself when I get to that. So if you're following along with me, you might need to have a drying tool with you as well. So without further ado, let's look at some colors. When I use my watercolors, I generally always have a little spray bottle with me. So if they have dried out a bit, I can just give them a little squirt to bring them back to life. Now my colour palette, as I showed you, is generally always fairly similar. And the colours that I will be starting with for this sketch is going to be all of the really nice warm stone colours, which is going to go around, around here. But as we saw in the photo, there's definitely a difference between this and this this and this there is we want to get that balance when we're putting down our washes 
So lots of water, lots of um, nice juicy washes, but also leaving some areas just a little bit paler. So you've got some, it's breathing a little bit. I love my yellows. I always have lots of yellows. And have you ever noticed when you get a color chart, the paints, how many different yellows and ochres you get compared to some of the other colors? It's quite impressive. So the colors that I generally will start with are the paler ones. So that's going to be a yellow or an ochre, and in this case, an ochre. I'm going to start with preparing some puddles of paint. So I will have some ochre. Now the thing with a lot of these ochre tones is they're quite dense. So if you've got a little bit of paper next to you, it's always worth just testing it to see that you can actually see your paper through the paint. If it looks too much like a kind of mustard and very opaque, then it's too much. So you really want to be looking at nice light washes. The other colour I'm going to be using is going to be this transparent orange, which is a lovely bright colour. And the other one initially will be this deeper pink, glycerin, crimson or anything of that type. And then after that, I will move into my brighter yellow. So just, I'm just getting these kind of on my palette. So they are gonna be ready to go. And there's some green. So those are my initial colors that I'll be working with to lay down some first washes. But just, just before I do that, it's a bit of a habit. I'm going to frame my, frame my page a little bit with this pencil just to, give it a, a bit of a border so I have some idea of starting and stopping with the paint. Okay, so I'm gonna start up here with my, with my ochre color. And as I say, it's gonna be very loose, very quick, lots of big splashy colors. And sometimes I actually tip my book at the same time. And as I move across here, I'm going to start introducing some other color. Like this pink, this is gonna go under here because I want this to be more interesting, to really frame this archway. If I have it all the same color, it will just look too flat. So I want to add in some other elements in places to vary it a bit. Oops. And as you can see, my colors are running, but that's okay because this is faster than I would normally do it, but the results will be fairly similar. And if anyone's got any questions as you're watching along, please do put them in the chat. I can't read the chat while I'm doing this, but Kathleen will pass them on. Yeah, amazing. And just a lovely comment right here. Um, Someone says, this is awesome. I'm relearning re how to paint with my non-dominant hand. Um, I'm glad that you are enjoying this class. Oh, wow, non-dominant hand, that is impressive. Really, gosh. So now I've got most of this covered with this ochre color. So I'm going to, as you can see, it's running everywhere, but I want to build up some of these other colors that go are going to be part of this. So as I do this, I'm just going to move my book around a bit so it actually makes it kind of got more movement in it than if it was just flat on the desk. Speaking um, of water movement, uh, we did use wet on dry, correct? 
Yes. And do you, you always use that technique or just no. a person? Okay, cool. Today, uh, well, this, the, the, the hot press book I'm using um, is great, but it's, I find that it works better for me if I, if I do go uh, wet on dry. Sometimes I do wet on wet, but usually that's with a slightly heavier weight paper. So, um, so here, what, I don't know if you can see this now, it's as it's moving around a lot. But what I'm doing is I'm adding in the color more so on this section around here. This is, this is where I want to keep the, the interest. So I'm just going to keep that moving around. And put a very light wash of ochre on the ground. Like that. And at this point, oops. So this is going to create some absolutely beautiful, beautiful patterns. And what I'll do is I'll take my yellow and where we've got this greenery here, which doesn't look terribly green, but we know it is greenery. I'm actually going to drop this yellow in up here, which looks quite vivid, but we know we can tone it down a bit. But I do want to convey that sense of greenery. And as the paper is damp, that lovely soft yellow will kind of disperse into the layer behind it. And if I drop in some sap green just here and there, that will do the same. It will just disappear into the washes. And it looks very strange at the moment, but hasn't dried and as we know with watercolour how it dries is always a little bit different and a little bit paler. So I've got lots and lots of different washes going on at the moment. So what I want to do now is I want to uh, use my rigger brush here and go in with actually a little bit more detail would you believe. So I would like to add in some richer lines. I'm using pink and orange here to just draw some of these shapes. Just draw some shapes into the, the damp paint. And it's dispersing but they will remain. That's the beauty of watercolour. The, the lines that I make I might draw some little stones there. Um, quick question from the chat. Uh, why hot pressed instead of cold pressed? Um, I use both, but today I, I, I do a lot of my urban sketching um, in these hot press books. Um, it is sometimes quite challenging to work with, but uh, I do like it. It's got, it's got a really nice smooth finish. And it's, it's, if you're using ink as well, it's, it's pretty good, pretty good to work with. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I think I've it got, did. I've got some Prussian blue here. And I'm going to use this with my rigor. I'm going to use this over here, would you believe? Put this in here. And here I'm going to just accentuate some of that kind of stonework outline that's going on over here. So already we're getting to see different patterns of colour forming. And I might actually put some of that up here to make a darker colour with the blue and the green combined with my rigger, just putting some dots of that in there. 
it's giving a bit more variation to that foliage that's going on. And I'm just going to Okay, so while Annette is drying um, her piece, um, just a quick reminder for everybody that if you haven't joined our private Facebook group, you can join us there. And it's a safe community for you guys to share your works, if, especially if you followed along. Um, and for the other questions, we'll go ahead and reserve that um, later or as we go along the demo. So keep them coming. I think Annette is still in the process of drying still. There you go. And speaking of, somebody has asked earlier in the chat if Annette has taught with Etcher before. Yes, she did. I did drop the um, link in the chat for her Annette's previous live demo. And also, she has been a guest in our Make More Art podcast. So I'll go ahead and drop that link for the newcomers. So I think Annette is back. I am back. I am back. So sorry about that. I've got paint that's moved all over the place, but that doesn't matter to me. I am going to use some cerulean blue uh, just in the background behind these people, just to give a very, very soft indication that there is actually something behind them. But this is again going straight onto the, the dry paper, just with some a very tiny dab of paint in the water because obviously we've got this very sharp kind of focus here with the contrast that we want to preserve but I think it's quite nice to have at least something in the background but we don't want to make too much of a big deal about that because we want we don't really want people looking too far beyond so I'm gonna put some more I've lost some of my lovely lines, so I'm going to put some more of those in. So there's been a bit of a discussion in the chat about how you used the um, heat tool. Is that pretty much intentional? Because they loved how some of the paints moved and create this branch textures. <laughs> was that pretty that, much that was totally accidental. Um, okay. But it kind of, that's also a really good point though about watercolor, because sometimes things happen with watercolor that are really, really not what you expect. But it's also then finding a way to work with that in your, in your sketches to make more of it. So like here I've got this kind of bloom cauliflower shape. So if I kind of accentuate that, it becomes a rock in my wall. So all the time you're, you're kind of working with what's happening to get the patterns to work for you rather than panicking and thinking, oh no, I've got to, I've got to start again. It's a disaster. So mm -hmm. sometimes things happen. And it's just perfect. It's just perfect. So I've got my, I've got some of my colors in down here. Might put a little bit of blue, but not too much there. Just to start building up the, the, the shapes. How are we doing on time, Kathleen? We've just passed um, 30 minutes for the whole demo. So we could have like 10, 15 more minutes. Okay. Um, yeah. And okay. just to let you know, everyone's vouching for you as a great teacher um, for Etcher. So, yeah, <laughs> someone's thank seconding. You. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Okay, well, um, in terms of where I am with this now, obviously I want to kind of push forward to get to some of the, the next bits. So I'm going to do this really dark thing under here, this shadow. And my shadow color for this is going to be based on uh, kind of this, bl this blue, which is, I've got Prussian blue for this today. And this violet, which both of those together are really quite bright. But if I put in some sienna as well, then it will tone it right back down again. 
and I'll end up with something much more subdued and kind of grey. So need to get some of that in there. So it kind of with more paint and less water, it's almost black. But I don't want to use black, so that's going to go in here. And as I, you know, when you're when you're sketching things like this, I don't know if you noticed in the in the photo, but actually the the kind of walls because they're going down. My I've sort of automatically just pushing my brush down so that it reflects that in my sketch. The same texture is reflected in my brush movements. Right, so that's that. And I might add a little bit more purple into it, a bit more water and start pulling that across here because we've got all of this under here is very much in shadow because no light is coming into that section of the kind of the tunnel. And I'll add some more water into my wash, this lovely Kind of purple colour. It's very soft shadow. I'll put that all across there. And I'll also, if you're feeling very brave, be using this along this wall as well. And because the lovely translucent qualities, you know, of watercolour, those previous washes that you've laid down will just still show through. You know, you're using your brush really gently to get that build up of layers. It's all about the layers. And while I'm while I'm doing that, I might just put in a little few dots of foliage. Now this is an interesting one because we know that foliage is green, but I don't really want to have this too bright a green. So I'm going to adapt it a little bit. And we know from our, our color charts that if you mix yellow and blue, you'll get green. So my starting color is actually going to be blue. To, and I'll use my rigger to add in some quite intense shapes for the tops this foliage here. You think, well, that's a very strange colour to use, but because we are tying all our, you know, all of our palettes kind of connected, because we're using the same colours for everything, it's all kind of getting it quite harmonious. So with that blue in place, you see how we've got the pale of the wall and this darker blue, which is a very contrasting color because it's cool, it's completely the opposite. It's jumping forward. So you've automatically got something a bit more dynamic happening there. And you can, you know, you can work with the local color if you want to, you can add in, you know, a real green underneath, go around those stone shapes there. And because blue and green, they do go together, they're next to each other, aren't they, on the, on the colour wheel, it's all kind of in balance. So we've got that lovely contrast going on there, and I'll also use my rigger, again with the green, but this time I'm going to add in some sienna mute it so it's not quite so vivid. So I've got a much more of a kind of khaki green and I'll use that up here with my rigger to create some patterns for this. Creeper, whatever it is. 
And you, the thing is with using the paint like this with the rigger, I love using my rigger, is you can create some really fine patterns but also if you think, oh, that looks a bit much, you can go in with some water and just soften it off. So it's not quite so, not quite so vivid and shouty. Just soften those off, which you, you can't do that quite so easily with ink. So you get these very soft patterns, which then represent what it is you're trying to capture in your sketch without, you know, just suggesting it really. We'll come back to that later when it's dried, but that, we probably won't have time for that. Now my little my little figures here, I'll use a small brush just to capture their their clothing and things. So he's got some jeans on. This is just cerulean blue. And as you're sketching your you're putting your colour on your figures, of course. Remember that, as we saw them in the photo, the light's coming from here. So you can see the size of his jeans here doesn't need as much colour as the left-hand side. So it's little things like that which will just give your sketches a bit more depth and kind of 3D aspect. Now I'm going to use some scarlet red on his coat. And the same thing applies with the colour because we need to make it a little bit darker on the left. So if I just drop in, put some um, sienna. on that side, it just gives it a bit more of a, a balance. We'll do the same for our lady. Got some got a haircut. Speaking of colors, um, since we're on a topic of colors, um, pretty interesting question in the chat. Do you prioritize value over hue? Yes, I would say I do without really thinking about it too much. Um, sometimes it's really good to just do a sketch just in one or two colors to capture it. If that answers the question. Yeah, I think it does. Um, but do let us know if you have more questions. I'm, um, slowly asking them to Annette and reserving some for our Q&A. Um, and for the newcomers, yes, this is recorded. So once we are done with our broadcast, you can just refresh the page and watch it um, as many times as you'd like. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going in with, because we, I realized I hadn't done this bit here. So actually in the sketch, it's, I don't know what color that is, dark something, dark gray but I'm gonna make it this color because I've been using pinks in my wall and I want there to be a connection between those two. So I'm always thinking about keeping things kind of together color wise. I can see from what I've got here that I definitely want to add more depth into this, but I don't know that we're gonna have time to do all of that because I want to show you some other things too. So my, my shadow colour, my go-to shadow colour for something nice and warm is going to be purple and sienna generally. And I only need a little bit of that to, to get these shadows from these, these folks here. And I'm going to put something in the background just because there is actually some, I think there's some boats and restaurants and stuff back here. So I'll do that. It just makes that look a little bit more interesting than having nothing there at all. 
And what I will show you is that with, say for your foliage, if you've got a rigger or a nice soft brush and you use that greeny color that we had, that's a nice muted green there. And you just do a little bit of splatter for the foliage. That will be enough to tell that story, especially if you're sketching quickly, like we are now. I'm not, I don't have time to be doing all the leaves. So just these little touches just automatically lifts that and it because it's all the right kind of color and we've already got our structure background greens going on just having those few splatters on top will help to tell that story and in terms of these 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 pencils how i like to use these either if my washes on the paper were still Sometimes I use them before I sketch, sometimes during, sometimes after. So for example, here, where I've got the, the wet paint, if I use my, my red pencil, which corresponds with him, I get a much more intense color there. So I can do quite a lot of that, or I can actually dip, very dirty water here, dipping my pencil into the water, I can start getting some really interesting patterns for those stones. And because when it's wet, the, the pencil gives off quite a lot of rich color, but then as it dries, that, that changes. So you get a lot of variation with your, with your mark making just by using these pencils in this way, it's great fun. So I highly recommend experimenting. <laughs> and if you're a, see, look at that. I think that was just lovely how that's suddenly gone ping and it's much more vibrant. And you can, also, you can also use these by just, you know, if in the foreground here, we've got lots of gravel and stones and things, just by wetting my, my pencil, I can work with that to get some interesting little marks without having to use lots and lots of minuscule brush strokes. So that's another quick tip for you. And it's quite good to vary the color of them. So they're not all the same. So I keep the reds in this foreground area. I might want some other ones back here. Now, obviously, if you once you put these pencils on, if you do try and go over with paint, you will find the colors will just all merge together. You know, if it's not, it is water soluble. But I am hoping that these little tips will help you with some shortcuts in your sketches. And I do, if you, if you have sketched along with me today or you do this after the recording uh, from the replay, do please uh, post your sketch either on Instagram or in the group so I can see it because I would really love to. Yeah, awesome. And speaking of, I'll go ahead and drop those links in the chat. Um, I'll be dropping a bulk link as well, including Annette's handle, um, Facebook group, those things that you might be interested in. Great. Well, I, I don't know how far you would like me to go further with this, Kathleen, because obviously <laughs> I've got, I've got, I, could, I could keep going. <laughs> yeah, we can keep going, but I think it will be more interesting for us to bond in the 90 minute class, which speaking of, I think there are newcomers who might be interested to know um, about what you'll be doing in the 90 minute class. So do you want to talk more about that again? Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, I will be using a very similar palette to the one that I've used in this preview. Um, I will be, I'm back at the same scene, but looking at it from a completely different angle. And I'm looking across the canal for this next one to this building and the bridge. So I'm looking at use of colors 
some of the things we've touched on today, looking at local color, architecture, light, shadow, how to fit in all these different elements within an urban sketch um, and make it a little bit more interesting than the photo that you see, which is mostly brown. Amazing. And yes, the 90 minute class is a step by step workshop where you get to um, expand on the things that you have learned today with Annette. And she will definitely go side by side with you. So you guys don't have to worry about time. Um, so yeah, you guys will have more time with Annette there. And um, just to answer Deborah's question. Yes, these are watercolor pencils that Annette has used um, for those lovely textures. Okay, um, a few more interesting questions, which I believe most of us, most of the questions we've answered already, but um, let's see, you've got a fan here. Um, Annette, do you do a di any digital painting aside from watercolor painting? <laughs> um, I do do some digital drawing, yes, but it's not something that I teach. I, gotcha. really do, I, I have illustrated, um, uh, actually I've done some illustrations for a children's book and you know, Ooh. graphics for more commercial projects, but it's not something I teach. Yeah, amazing. So you might want to check out Annette's Instagram for that um, to know more about her. Um, I see some people are interested to knowing more about the urban sketching side of Annette. So um, yeah, do check out the links I've posted in the chat. And also, if you followed along today, um, I've posted our private Facebook group. It's open to anyone again. Um, it's really just a supportive community. You could post your work free for comments, suggestions, um, feedback. We are really an art growing community. And that's, I believe that's super fun to join that group too. Um, if there are no more questions, I think we can wrap up in a bit. So while we're waiting for some final questions, um, Again, thank you so much, Annette, for that lovely demonstration today. Um, and we do these live demos a couple of times a week. So make sure to hit that subscribe button to get notified. And if you loved what you've watched today, click on the like button below this video and also click on the survey form, which I've dropped the link in the chat. So if you want to just express how Annette has been super amazing today, um, go ahead and let us know. And since Annette has taught before already, and um, it will be teaching again today. Let us know if you want Annette to do more classes in the future and what classes would you want her to do? Um, thanks again, Etcher, Absolute Joy. Um, oh, website or Instagram. Yep, I'll go ahead and drop that link. So while I do that, um, Annette, any final thoughts before we have to close the session? Um, no, I, I don't think so. I guess I just wanted to say that if you've ever done any of my uh, workshops on the website already, you'll know that for each class that I do, I do like um, a little breakdown of all of the steps, step by step. So all of my classes have a PDF that goes alongside. So you kind of can use that as a reminder, not only when you're watching the video, but separately when you're doing whatever you're sketching. And the other thing is just not to be afraid of color and to have fun with it because uh, without mixing everything in the palette first and letting these beautiful patterns form on your page, you get some really, really magical results. Whereas I find that the risk is if you try to match the local color too closely and you're using lots of very muted tones, it can work wonderfully. I'm not saying it's wrong, but you also risk ending up with colors that just all look like that. So that's why I, I think it's great to experiment with the brighter colors and love those yellows. Amazing, all right. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, and thank you so much, Annette, for again, that lovely thank demonstration. You, <laughs> Looking forward to seeing everyone's work. Right, right. Um, please go ahead and just share us on our private Facebook group or tag Annette. I've just dropped her socials and the 90 minute class. So it's a great way for you to support Annette with what she does. Um, so yeah, go ahead and check out that link in the chat. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you thank so much for joining us.
Okay. Um, and I hope we made your gloomy weather. I think some of you guys had some gloomy weather. I hope we made that and turned the tables around and made it more colorful for you guys. And <laughs> until next time, everybody, make more art. Bye for now. Bye, everyone.